Now, if you're like me, you've probably heard this slogan, from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free. Okay, sounds kind of catchy though, huh? No. So I thought about it and I thought with all of this Israeli-Palestinian conflict, Hamas conflict, what is something that no one's talking about? Well, no one's talking about how that slogan would be fulfilled. It's something that nobody's discussing. And I thought, hey, I should kind of think about that. And I did. I came up with some possible kind of things that maybe need to be fleshed out a little further for all of those folks, especially living in the West, who are all in favor of it, that may not have fully thought through all the mechanics. So here I go. I'm going to do my best. I'm not an international diplomat. I don't have international world um, you know, relations expertise or anything. I'm just a simple guy who kind of sees some flaws in it or kind of some issues that have to be worked out. I, well, basically, I'm a sales guy. I always like to, if I'm going to sell something, I kind of think through the problems and go, how do we solve those? Okay, so let's begin. First off, obviously, we know what that phrase means. That means the extermination, evacuation, removal of all Israelis from Israel. So basically what we're talking about is a one state solution. Palestine comes in, they're the state. Okay, everybody's with me on that. All right, so now the question is, what do we do with the people that are there? There's approximately 9.2 million people that live in Israel. And you'll be probably surprised to learn that 20% of them are Arabs. That's right. Almost 2 million Arabs live in Israel. So isn't that kind of like a two-state thing that's already working? Ah, whatever. Anyway, so they live there. Um, apparently, there's no apartheid because the Arabs have full citizenship like everybody else. They can vote, they can work, they can do everything else. There's even somebody who's a judge in the Supreme Court. There's members of uh, the Arab community that are in the Knesset, their ruling parliament. So I'm not sure if they're gonna be keen on wanting to stay behind because they probably, well, I kind of know they won't because they haven't been in a hurry to exit Israel and live in Gaza. So I'm assuming they're probably gonna just wanna go with the rest of the Israelis. Okay, so. That leaves us about 9.2 million people that we have to relocate. All right, so first kind of challenge as I see it, where do we send them? We've got to have a place where they can all go. I'm assuming they want to stay as a core group. They kind of like each other. They don't really leave their land. So where do we relocate them? Greenland, Iceland, Norway, I don't know. I'm, I'm just open to ideas. I'm spitballing here. Now, I'm assuming because they like this kind of Middle Eastern, warm, temperate, you know, kind of climate, we probably have to put them somewhere nearby. However, all those nations are kind of inhospitable to Jews. Uh, all the surrounding neighbors, they have the Arab nations. There's virtually no Jew that lives anywhere. So it's kind of like they're apartheid states that they're surrounded by. So there's no place for them there. Um, which leaves us where? Europe? Um, North America? I don't know. I, again, I, have, I don't really have, know where they could go. And I'm assuming that those that are shouting these slogans obviously have thought this through. So I would welcome their comments on where they could be relocated to. Now, a couple of things with the relocation. Um, they're going to leave behind everything they've built and created since 1948 or whenever they came to be. Now, there was nothing there before. It was kind of like arid desert. It was kind of like no, no services, no nothing. And they've built up a whole nation that is flourishing in that region. Actually, one of the most green flourishing nations there is. So I'm assuming they're going to need to get some compensation. Because if I use kind of social justice warrior thought, if the Palestinian, and now I'm not talking about who was there before and all that history will actually, you know, the Israelis were, the, the Jewish people were there like 15. Anyway, let's not get into all that. Um, if the Israelis leave, and somebody else new comes to occupy that land. And again, let's not get into the debate, but let's just go with me here. They're now the occupiers. They become the colonizers. And don't the colonizers have a duty to pay those they've decolonized? I'm thinking they do. So obviously somebody's gonna have to write a pretty big check because all these people are gonna want some compensation. So who does that? Well, I guess the Palestinians will. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, they won't because they're supported entirely by the international community. That's right. They don't have really any commerce or industry of their own. So they won't be doing it. Um, will it be the other Arab nations? 
Well, I, I think they might, but then again, they're not really letting anybody into their own borders right now, like Egypt, Jordan. They don't want any Palestinian refugees coming in there. So they may not contribute a whole lot, which leaves the international community, I guess, Europe, North America, I guess they'll pony up the check. So all of those students in Toronto, New York, all those people that are out protesting, maybe they could pay for it all. Yeah, I think everybody who's in favor of this, who goes with the idea from the river to the sea, I just crack open the checkbooks. Let's start compensating because you obviously would need to have this as being equitable and just because it's all about justice. Now, the other thing I suppose, if the Israelis don't get compensation, they would have the perfect right as being oppressed now to burn everything to the ground, right? Because that's acceptable. If you're not getting your way, you're being hard done by by another group who is actually now an oppressor, you have the right, sort of like the George Floyd Black Lives Matter riots, to burn everything to the ground. So, well, I suppose the Israelis could do that too. They could burn everything to the ground and give the Palestinians exactly what was there when they got there, which was nothing. Okay, seems fair and equitable to me. Okay, so now we've, we've talked about the fact of where do these people go, and we've talked about the fact of compensation. Now, one other thing kind of irks me. Now, I know this may be just kind of empty fodder or rhetoric, but it does seem that um, part of jihad and hardcore Islam is the belief, or Islam is the belief, that Jews are to be eradicated. Now, if that's the case, um, if we relocate them to a region where they're all congregated again, could they possibly face that threat? Because, I mean, they would be sitting ducks. They're all in one area and it's an easy target for someone, which would mean that we would have to militarize, build, they'd have to have defenses and all of this sort of stuff, which sounds eerily familiar to what's there now. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, so like I said, I'm not pro or against or for or against or anything else. I'm just spitballing ideas. I would just like to know that this bumper, you know, bumper slogan, this wonderful catchy slogan, how do we implement it? I think we really need to do that justice because I'm assuming that most of the people that shout this are usually intellectual heavyweights and they've really thought this through. So I'm just looking for input. I'm saying, how do we solve it? I'm not saying I'm against it. Fine, let's figure it out. How do we make this really work so it works for everybody and is just and equitable and everybody gets what they want? Nope. Anyway, I welcome your thoughts. Um, you can always follow me on my Rumble and my uh, YouTube channel. I'm also on Locals and I'm at uh, Camera612 on Twitter. Anyway, like I said, I would welcome your thoughts on this because I think these are things we have to flush through. Nope. Anyway, see you next time.